The skin editor is a tool for creating custom skins. A skin is a layer that contains graphical elements and is displayed over the panorama. Skins are used for many things. The most common application is for controlling the panorama with buttons. Another common use for the skin is to add custom images for hotspots, and then use those hotspots to pop up video, text, websites, and images. When you have a tour, the skin is quite important because it allows the users to move from one panorama to another. It also provides a way of navigation. All of these skins were created using the skin editor, and in this tutorial, we'll learn about its interface and take a look at how to do some basic tasks. So, let's get started. There are three main parts to the skin editor. The tree organizes all the skin content and supports a parent-child organization. The canvas is where you design the skin, the property section is where you change an element settings, like adjusting its appearance and adding actions to it. The toolbar at the top is where you select which element to add, undo an action, zoom in to the canvas, open the live preview window, and get to the color tool and components toolbox. The menu bar also shouldn't be missed. It contains a lot of features too, like the ability to detach the tree and properties, and to align elements. Right-click on an element and you'll find even more options. Elements can be added to the skin in a few ways. You can use the toolbar by selecting the element and clicking in the canvas to add or draw it. You can also use the Elements menu, or drag elements like images, videos, sounds, and components to the canvas. The tree acts like a browser or organizer and shows the stacking order of the skin elements. This here is the Silhouette skin that we provide as a pre-installed skin. You're free to use them for your projects or simply to learn how things are done. It includes a simple controller, a loading graphic that shows the loading progress of the project, and an info button that pops up a window that shows information that's been added to the user data fields. As you might have noticed, clicking on the eye here will hide or show the element in the canvas. This doesn't remove it from the skin or hide it on output, it just hides it from the canvas to keep it tidy and easier to work with. If you want to make the element invisible on output, you'll have to set this in the properties. The layering of the elements is like other graphics editing programs, in that the topmost element is the frontmost layer. A parent element will have children anchored to it. To arrange elements, drag them until a thick black line appears. And notice that when I move the loading container above the screen tint, that it now floats on top of it. To make an element a child, just drag it on top of the parent. And to bring an element to the top level, drag it above its parent and then release it when you see a thick black line. And if you do something wrong, you can always undo it. Right-clicking on an element will bring up a menu where you can cut and copy the element, lock the element so it can't be edited, reset all the actions, and add that element to the component toolbox. Another way to lock elements is to hold the Alt or Option key and click here. This will toggle between lock and unlock. To select more than one element, select one, and then while holding Control or Command, select another element. To select a group of elements, select one, hold the Shift key, and then select the last one in the series. The canvas is your workspace, and a good way to start is by adjusting it to your project. You can set the canvas size, which is generally the project's window size, in the Properties tab. You might also find it helpful to set the grid to 10 pixels and turn on Snap to Grid so that the elements will snap every 10 pixels. This is also where you can define variables for use in logic blocks, and we'll explain these two concepts in a later tutorial. 
Once the canvas has been set, you can give yourself more room to work in by either hiding the tree and properties panels or by detaching them from this main window. And if necessary, you can zoom into the canvas. The easiest way to bring elements like sounds and images into the editor is to drag them in. And when you do that, they'll be active, which is indicated by the red border and highlighted in the tree. An image that you want to use as a button can be converted in the properties, and this will give you the ability to add states to it. Text boxes can be drawn in the editor by first selecting the text tool in the toolbar and then click and drag in the canvas. You can then double click inside that text box and type your content. The canvas features guides for placement that can be turned on in the view menu. Now when I adjust or move this text box, you'll see the alignment guides. The green lines align to other elements, while the yellow lines indicate both horizontal and vertical centers. When you're building a controller, the buttons can be evenly distributed and aligned. Select them all by dragging around the buttons or by selecting them individually using the command or control key. The element with the thick red border is the active element of the group, and that means all other elements will align themselves in relation to that active element. I'll use Align and Distribute in the context menu to arrange the buttons accordingly. And now I want to make sure that they're centered in the skin. I just have to right click to bring up the context menu and choose Center Element in Canvas Horizontal. While the buttons are selected, I can also move and resize them all together by adjusting the active element. Holding Shift while resizing them will keep their original shape while scaling up or down, and holding down the Alt or Option key will resize them to a square. Each element has properties that can be edited in the Properties section, and depending on which element is selected will depend on which properties are shown. For example, a text box will have text properties, and a rectangle will have properties for its border and fill colors. If both of those elements are selected, only their common properties will be shown, making it easy, for instance, to change the fill colors at the same time. You can control the property section by choosing to have the panels open one at a time by turning on the property solo mode in the view menu or here in the panel itself. The property section is also where we can add actions and modifiers to our elements, and the actions will make the elements interactive. So this zoom out button will zoom the image out when it's pressed. The modifiers are used to affect the skin elements in some way. So for instance, here we can scale a rectangle element horizontally so it can act as a loading bar. The properties of the skin are also here, and to see them, just click in any empty part of the canvas. The toolbar holds all the available elements and tools for the skin editor, while the menu bar holds features for aligning or centering elements and to customize the skin editor. The container, rectangle, text, external image loader, and map elements are all drawing tools. For these, you select the tool and then click in the editor to add the default shape. Otherwise, you can click and drag to create the shape you need. You can also draw scroll areas, timers, videos, and seek bars. The Add Image, Button, SVG, Swift Element buttons all require you to choose your files. Just select the tool and click in the canvas to bring up a dialog and choose a file. Hotspot templates and node markers are simply placed in a canvas and are elements that don't specifically appear in the skin. And we'll cover these elements in detail in another tutorial. If you're using Pano 2 VR Pro, you'll see a few more buttons in the toolbar. Add node image will add a thumbnail image of a specified node.
and the cloner is a drawn area over an element to clone it. Draw it over a node image, for instance, and it'll clone all the rest of the node images in the project as thumbnails. To the right of the toolbar, you'll find a History button. Clicking on it once will step back in history or undo one action at a time. If you click and hold it, it'll pop up the history where you can go back even further in time. You can zoom into the canvas using this menu here, and this tool might be the most helpful. This is the Skin Editor's live preview, where you can see how your skin is building up and how it works, since it's also interactive. If you keep the mouse down on the button, you'll get a list of predefined sizes to preview the skin. And you can customize these sizes in Panatuviar's settings. Finally, we have the Color Tool and Components Toolbox. The color tool helps you change a skin's color scheme, and the components toolbox holds pre-built skin components and a place for you to save your own.